Well, after that long episode, it's finally time to settle shit. Well, I'm hoping the finale episode was recorded less time than the last part. So I'll hope that's the ca case. And hey, look! <coughs> it's freaking Dingpot! Yeah, I remember you from the end of the game. You had to deal with a lot of crap from Grunty, and she still kept you after you helped us? Well, I guess it's nice for us to... Oh, great. Get dirty, huh? Well, I guess I'll take that privilege. Thank you so much, Mr. Dingpot. You. Ooh, free refills and everything. All right. So, with that out of the way, welcome back, everybody, to the finale of Banjo-Tooie. With your host, MJ406. And there's going to be no bonus episode for this. This is the absolute last episode. As you'll see, we can now go up the Cauldron Keep to the last fight. I'm ready for you, Grunty. And your war pad here in case there's anything you need to do. Once you have 70 jiggies, you can come up here. It's time to finish her off once and for all. There's no one here. So let's get the fuck out! Still, to think that this is where their secret base has been all this time. At least their new one. It's quite a sight. And pretty good evil setting for a final battle. I say so myself. Yeah, I would like to get back to that card game myself. Now everybody's alive, we can play fairly and not have to worry about that. Still. Oh boy. Hey! The Hag won the Monstrous Mechanical Mud Muncher! It's this thing that we've been following pretty much the entire game. Check it out. You're fighting the freaking machine that got them all here to begin with. And somehow they didn't see it when they got up there. I seriously wonder about that too. But, well, Grunty's in charge of it. But the sister's gone, it's just her. Her sister's got crushed, so they're pretty much dead. However, she's durable, as you can tell. Her bony body is not fucking dead yet. She's allowed to be undead. It's a bullshit. But, now she has a giant machine with her this time. Instead of a broomstick. Here we go! The final boss battle begin! This damn machine is powerful. It's hard to take down. However, this comes with a twist. The quiz game's going! <laughs> the quiz isn't done yet! She'll go easier or harder on you based on how you answer the question. <laughs> it's fucked up! <laughs> so you want the boss fight to be easier, make sure you have your knowledge. What is her name spelled backwards? That would be this one. Adeline... Get it right, she'll go slower. So yeah, it's worth having your knowledge with you. If you get it wrong, though, it'll be harder to dodge. And now, the Briegel Blasting commences again. You just have to keep blasting Grunty until she runs out of health. But she has 100, the highest for any boss of the game. However, with every 10 she loses or so, a new phase begins. For example, now it's more lasers. She's firing her mini lasers! So stay on your toes. She is one tough customer. Question? Next one. What's wrong with the kids full of Jolly Rogers? Uh, uh, colder full of toxic waste. Oh, thank God. Oh, God. By the way, make sure you have the eggs necessary for this fight. There are plenty of ways to refill, so, you know. Be sure we fill out eggs every now and then. You'd be surprised how much you need for this fight. Damn it, I'll have to refill later. How are you using any egg? So, you don't have to worry about too much. Uh-oh. But the lasers aren't working. So now it's time for her to come up with something new. The Mortar Cannon! This machine's got a whole bunch of crazy freaking tricks. Gah! No! Whew. 
Got the grenade eggs. And now for the next question. What could this one be? Oops. Tried to speed up the question. My bad. So now her attacks are faster. I fucked up. It's really not that much more deadly, but it can be annoying. So, try to make sure you answer things right. Alright, she will eventually go back into the hag one after a while, so you'll have to answer another question and then get her out of the phase again. So make sure you get the damage the first time, so you don't have to keep doing this forever. Double bombs away! Now it's double mortar time! Am I missing health? I don't know, I'm gonna keep those honeycombs around. Thankfully, those honeycombs don't disappear. That would suck if they did. Okay, don't hit A, speed up the question. What are the arch enemies of the Jinjos? Jujus! Bim I see Bimbos. That'd be a good name. Ah, fuck it. Too bad you can't lock an angle. If you can, like, lock yourself at a particular angle, that would make things so much easier. Oh, well, this is before Perfect Dark happened, so they weren't exactly perfect with their shearer controls. And now she learned the mortars aren't working. So, ugh. a V10 engine, huh? Damn, that's pretty rad. Oh boy! Now she's bringing the engine. She's bringing the drill. She'll attack me head on, and then spin. Thank the eggs keep regenerating, so you don't have to worry about that too much. Ew! That perfect timing, though. Alright, I'll just keep hanging around her side. She won't pin herself too much to a wall, so that's one good thing, I guess. Different colored gem piles are found in Gurgle's mine. Ah. Uh, ah, oh, shit. Damn it! I didn't remember. It was like purple, like purple blue and something else. All right, watch out. The lasers are still out, so. Try not run into them. Yeah, if you didn't notice, the lasers do get progressively faster as the fight goes on. Now she's got something notched. Something's going. Garage. It's fucked up. Now we can fuck the batteries. Fuck you. So now we gotta unpower this thing. Or goddamn drill. Alright then. Now all four of the lasers are on, and the drill is faster than it was before. This is one of the harder phases of the fight because it's a lot of crap to die. Also, the lasers only have a particular range. They're like a laser pointer. In a way. Still. Gotta watch out. Come on. Alright, here we go. The total number of legs on all of Humble Woman's Dream. Oh my god! What? Whoa! Wow. Good question. Holy crap. Damn, what a fucking brain buster. Jesus Christ. Whatever. We got her taken down. Watch out for the lasers as you come over. They'll kind of fade, but they won't completely fade, so just make sure you hop over them. Watch out for these grunts. They'll ruin you. And there goes your second battery. Say goodbye to your stupid hag one, bitch. No, don't stop, Mr. Drill. My lovely lasers. So now your vehicle's broken. So all that's left is for us to fight to the death. No more quiz questions. Because I still have Kazooie in her dragon mode. The smart move would probably be to use my fire eggs. How did that feel, huh? Oh, but don't worry. She still has some tricks up her sleeve. For example, the minions. You can't get health from these guys, however. They'll be there to get in your way from fighting Grunty. 
So, you know, definitely take care of them. Or will they give health? Still. Definitely take care of them. They will find you pretty easily. Ugh. For some reason, it's a lot easier the grenade eggs than the fire eggs to actually lock onto her. Maybe because the grenade eggs are, are larger? I don't know. I feel a lot more comfortable with the freaking grenades. Get the hell out of my way! Oh, that one didn't hit her? It was right on her! Don't forget! Still the freaking beak drill. Ow. Or the Regal Bash, it's called. And now, the hardest phase of the fight. She stole something else she could use, apparently. It's toxic gas. Cyanide and mustard gas flavor. My favorite. Now your time, and a second minion comes out. Make sure you're stocked up. And keep those honeycombs for this phase because this is the hardest phase of the fight. All right, there we go. With that, one more phase to go for the final hit. Time for the biggest, baddest spell she can muster. Prepare to join your buddy bottles. You'll wish you'd never taken on the mighty Gratuna Winky Bunyan. W Winky Bunyan? Really? <laughs> no! Don't go tell him or I'll sue you! <laughs> Jesus, even at the last moment! <laughs> it's like, you tell anybody my last name, I'm gonna sue your ass! Oh yeah! Drop her, make her, hit her as she's forming her spell, and with that... Boom! Bitch! Dead! Fuck you, bitch! Die! Yes! My nemesis has been defeated. Whew! And there's your last boss, huh? Pretty epic, just like the last one for Banjo-Kazooie. Got a whole bunch of phases to go through, but a lot of the Briegel blasting needs to happen. With that, we can finally go back to the party, which they apparently know about. Don't know how, but they do. Aw, oh, man. It's too late. Look at that, they even have half-eaten food. That's how you know the party's dead. Yeah, we all came too late. Everybody that helped me also couldn't make it, apparently. Mumbo, Wumba, Jam Jars. What a shame. All the people that did kind of stuff the last game got to have a party. Not us. God damn it. And, of course, freaking... Look at the half-eaten pizzas. This guy sucks. Why do we invite this guy? Half-eaten cake, and now on the floor. What a shame. Ah! That was the worst part I've been to. Don't blame us. Oh, yeah. We had to deal with it her sooner, huh? Not, not like we could do everything on our own. Also, I made her not a dragon anymore. Don't ask why. I just did. Oh, come on. We don't need to fight now. Yeah, like I said, we don't need to fight. And now you two are gonna start something. <sighs> oh yeah. Yeah. You're gonna summon your golden statue, kick her butt. The first thing you summon, huh? You're gonna say you wanna argue! <laughs> yeah, thanks. You should have wrapped that up sooner. Although, since we can't enjoy a typical party. Why well, don't we have a Banjo-Kazooie style party? Let's have a kick around, that's what we call it. And if you have no idea what it is, come join the fun. So, your reward for beating Grunty, while you don't get to see them at the party, all the characters that made, played a big role in your victory, get to enjoy this. They get to kick around Grunty's head. <laughs> Sucks to be her. Everyone's got their little quips. <laughs> See? 
This is something everybody can agree on. Everybody gets to have fun beating on a witch's head. Being a bitch. God. How's she still alive? Oh boy! Yeah, how is she still alive? Seriously, she should be dead. This is bullshit. You'll be sorry. Just you wait till Banjo 3. <laughs> that was their original joke from Banjo Tooie. Because, you know, Tooie sounded like Banjo Kazooie 2. So, Banjo 3. Ha! <laughs> She's still getting abused. But we all know the third game is Nuts and Bolts, which I don't even know if I'm going to be doing for the channel. Either way, that's the end of Banjo Tooie! Ladies and gentlemen. Why don't we see where I am on the leaderboards, by the way? Number 265? Huh. Not bad. I mean, compared to other people that probably did it much faster. Can I see who number one is, what their time was? Four hours, huh? I took more than twice as long, but I'm in the top 300, so there's that. And I kind of wasted my time, too, so... That's really good! At least if I have to say so myself. So, what other achievements are there, if any? None, I got all of them. We beat Grunty, made Rainbow appear. They show the Pants Attack one. Which, I don't know, that, that makes it a little hard to tell what's going on. Save Saber Man. Beat the freaking... The freaking second kickball thing in Hailfire Peaks. Shot up all those damn... Ulcers or clinkers or mines. Froze all the calamari. Caught all the balloons in Witchy World's game. Defeat Old King Cole. Got one of all the treasures. Has to stop and swap egg or split them up and beat Klungo. There we go. That's all the achievements. So that's pretty much everything else. Well, there's only one thing left to show off. I mean, multiplayer, all that is are the, uh, the Bregal blasting stages that you did. Those could be available in multiplayer. So you all have different characters that do Bregal blasting. You have you have Banjo Kazooie. You have Grunty and her broom. You have Jinjo, and I think another Jinjo. <laughs> it's pretty cool. Oh wow! I just noticed there's a copy of Banjo Kazooie nuts and bolts behind the N64. What's the TV thing? I don't know. Also, you can go here and replay all this crap. Which, uh, well, I do want to show off some other thing and show off of the cinema section. But if you can excuse me for a second, there's one thing I have to do first before I do that. Uh, and that actually involves a little bit of cut. Sorry about that. I feel like an asshole. Uh, well, there is a character parade. We'll be showing that off. Also, all the bosses are here. All of them. You fight them at minimum conditions. <laughs> so, you know, five things of health and the minimum air. All the mini games you played, including the quiz shows. You can replay all this so you don't have to start a whole game over to go over some of your favorite moments. All right, I'll show off the character parade, but first, a little tiny jump cut. All right, the flash is done. On to the character parade. So, it's time to see all the characters that are in this game. Let's see what we have. You have been watching. The Golden Goliath. You know, I don't remember him that much. I guess he was there, though. Bovina. All right, this is just gonna go over all the freaking major slash minor characters in the entire game. This is what you get for getting all the jiggies. Slumber. It's nice to give you a little, nice little like indication of the name of every single character. Officer Uno, Uno Gopaz? Hmm. Seems to fit him, oddly enough. Protase, that's his name. I called him Target Zan. That's the freaking boss who they're probably gonna show too. Yeah, there he is. Weird, towering, big headed freak. There's a lot of them. Alright, well, yeah, we'll just go through this list. Oh, there's Bully, Bully and Bill and his partner, partner Brentilda? Nope, that was one of the. Wow, Matt. Dilberta. Close enough, I guess. Well, since this list is going to go on for a while, I guess I'll just talk about things. So, th 
this episode will officially mark the end of the Rarathon, which has been a nice long showcase of some of the best that Rare has to offer. There's a lot more to this, though. Like, I kind of mentioned it last episode, but there's, there's a lot more. There's Deaths of the Donkey Kong Country franchise. There's older stuff from Rare as well as newer stuff, like Conker's Bad Fur Day, if you're into some vulgarity. And Rare had some other stuff that was pretty decent after the Nintendo 64 life cycle. Oh, I didn't know he sneezed into the fries. What an asshole. I mean, there wasn't... And, oh, yeah, can't forget about Diddy Kong Racing. That's another good one. A racing game made by Rare. It was actually really damn good. They also have a lot of gems, like Jet Force Gemini, awkwardly controlled but well-designed. They had, uh... Well, grab by the coolies, let's just ignore that altogether. <laughs> I don't think anybody wants to deal with that. The 360 had some pretty good titles. I mean, I never played Cameo Elements of Power, but apparently it's a pretty decent game on their part. And, uh, well... Viva Pinata was actually really good as well. It's like... If you need, if you need a good description for Viva Pinata, it, it feels like The Sims, but... Very colorful and, well, there is kind of a plot to it. I never got far in it because it's a long game, but it's pretty damn fun to, like, develop your pinatas into more and more complex creatures and complete missions with them, build stuff, breed them. It's it's crazy. Even pinata is, like, the best game they've made in the past, like, ten years, I think. I mean... They made some other good ones, but Viva Pinata was a great hit. I don't know much about the sequel, but I imagine it was probably good too. There's also the sequel to this, Panjo Kazooie Nuts and Bolts. I mean, I will say that while it does get a lot of ridicule for not being as good as the first two games, it is still good. It's just. It feels like they just tacked on Banjo Kazooie's franchise into it. Which is a little frustrating. But you know, it was still a good game. It just it it just feels like it defamed the whole franchise for it. But hopefully if a fourth game comes around, they uh go back to the roots that are similar to these ones. I'm just hoping that uh, we don't need another experiment. Some game franchises failed from experiment uh, experimental ideas. It's not always great to expand them into trying different things. For example, Paper Mario Sticker Star. Oh, God. I didn't like Super Paper Mario that much either, but, you know, it's alright to take a game to a different direction if you want to, like, slightly ramp it up, revamp it. What if you, like, change its core mechanics? It just... It doesn't feel the same. You, especially if you, like, change the type of genre it is. Like, Paper Mario's best example I can come up with. The first two Paper Mario games were turn were turn-based RPGs, and it was... They were both very good. Super Paper Mario got rid of the turn-based idea and just made it completely action. Which kind of worked in its own right, but it got rid of a lot of the RPG feel, if you ask me. And Sticker Star pretty much revamped the turn-based combat, but they had a lot of flaws in that combat, which were based on its stickers. That was its biggest flaw. Nuts and bolts? Well, for those of you that know the game, oh boy! Looks like Choposaurus got more food or something to get the ulcers out of him. Yeah, fuck you, buddy. Hungry! But Dots and Bolts, it took away the platforming genius that was the Banjo Kazooie games and made the game much more focused on vehicles. Creating vehicles and using them for different scenarios. Like I said, it's still good, it just. You're getting rid of what made the franchise magical and turning it into something else. It's not something you should do. Rare had plenty of other characters that could have gone on. They had Tip Top, who they used in this game. Like, look at the Diddy Kong Racing characters from the N64. There are plenty of characters I could have used for that. Tip Top probably would have been their best option. 
but I don't know. I don't really know how they went. Then again, the big heads of uh, Chris and Tim Stamper left after uh, Rare got bought out. Oh, which, by the way, for those of you who don't know, the last game that Rare worked on with Nintendo was uh, Star Fox Adventures. Kind of shows the beginning of the fall, which, uh, well, I explained it in my LP of Star Fox Adventures, by the way, check that out if you want. But I may as well say it again here. They were going to make that a completely original game, kind of based off The Legend of Zelda, that was going to have a lot of interesting concepts and ideas. However, Miyamoto saw the character, who looked like a fox, thought Star Fox would be a good fit. So we got a Legend of Zelda-style Star Fox game. Again, changing a franchise into something it didn't have to be. However, the game was good. But, because Rare had to... They had time constraints for releasing the game and had to change to a Star Fox style. It kind of got a little stripped down. It was extremely linear, and they had to get rid of some of the content that was originally going to be in the game, so it wasn't nearly as much as it could have been. Ah, uh, you know. And Miyamoto's the one who said that that freaking game delayed games are eventually made great. Or eventually good, while rushed out games are, f while broken games are forever broken. You can't rush out a game, which I think they finally learned that lesson. And I'm hoping they don't screw it up again. I mean, again, you don't have to do something original to the franchise every time. If you could just take an idea and expand on it and make it better. That's another great direction to go. I mean, look at Call of Duty for crying out loud. They've been doing nothing but taking the same game and freaking rehashing it to make it, quote, better year after year after year. While it's debatable whether it's better or not, they take the same idea and it still sells huge. That's not to say that repeating things that made it successful is a bad thing, but, well, you got to make it feel fresh somewhat. Of course, I'm with the crowd that thinks that, well, Call of Duty isn't exactly doing that. But, you have to do it to an extent. That's really all I'm trying to say. Which Banjo-Tooie did. This is the perfect example of what a sequel should be. It literally expanded on what Banjo-Kazooie left. And made what I believe to be a better game than the previous. It tagged on multiplayer for a nice little fun bonus element and expanded the world of the characters as well as maintaining a lot of the previous ones you saw in Banjo-Kazooie. It's why I want another Banjo-Kazooie game to be like this. Kind of like what Ukulele is. Which I haven't played yet, but I'm looking forward to it. I, I know, I'm, I'm delaying a bit. <laughs> but, you know, old franchises like this just make me realize just how kind of stale part of the gaming industry has been. I know I'm looking at it in a negative view, because a lot of it's trying to go for storytelling, but then they end up like, ah, you know what, I'm rambling, I'm not making any sense. Either way, I just... I just wish more of the games were more about just the fun aspect these days, rather than expanding on characters and their universe. Royston, I didn't even know that thing had a name. Like, instead of just expanding on, like, characters and story and stuff, they, they try to do that, and sometimes it gets rid of part of what made some of the games fun back in the day. Like, see, this game was pretty simple. Which is why I love old games by Rare, and a lot of older games from the N64 and GameCube era in general. Damn it. Once it got to the PS4, and once it got to the PS3 360 era, I started to notice that shift in tone that was more towards story rather than gameplay. While I am for it, in a bit, again, the gameplay I feel should come first. Well, I can't really think of much else to talk about. 
So, uh, you know, just enjoy the gaming you love and, uh, you just relive a lot of games that are just, this is just a golden example of one of the franchises that made gaming great. It was always expanding since the 80s, and this was part of the peak of it in the 90s. And early 2000s, I suppose. Yeah, I'm really running out of things to talk about. I can't even say anything on my mind. Either way, we're finally in the character parade. Now, this game, of course, starred Banjo. And only Banjo. Oh, and Kazooie. Why'd you separate them both? Confusing, but fine, I guess. Oh, thank God it's over. Really long character parade. I knew that was going to take a long bit of time. Well, that's everything this game has to offer. I mean, I would show off the multiplayer mode, but, well, maybe that's something that's better saved for the co-op channel. Well, either way, let me just do one more thing before we end this off. There's one thing I never actually looked at. You look at all the items you have on hold with you, and the objects and items. See, look, I still have my two doubloons with me. This would also be where the fries and burger would be if I had them with me. It keeps track of all the stop and swap items you got from the previous game, Banjo-Kazooie. And all the stop and swap two things you have here for Banjo-Kazooie Nuts and Bolts. With the Oh No Not Again, Lucky Loser, Better Than a Slap, and the winner is... And Calmer Chameleon. These are things that can go into Banjo Kazooie Nuts and Bolts if you so wish to play it. I doubt I'll do it for the channel, but who knows? I might have a change of heart. It's hard to say. Either way, I'm really glad I got to show off some of these rare gems with you. I know I did plan on doing Conquer's Bad Fur Day. I thought I thought Blast Corpse was probably a better fit. Now all the games are done, I have to think of more games to do in the, uh, in my cycle. Which, well, other than the one on Monday, Wednesday, Friday, I'm still trying to plan it out. Because it's been a little hard for me to think of games recently. I don't really want to do more rare at the moment, because I've done a hell of a lot recently. Still. One of my favorite gaming companies from back in the day, and they still had some good games recently, just not up to the standards of the 90s. Still, I recommend checking them out, especially if you're new into gaming. It's a, it's definitely a fun series to try out. All the rare stuff, really. But, I think I'm talking about this a little too much. So, thank you all for watching my Rare-thon, and... More different games will be coming, I'm sure of it. Whatever they will be. But until then, I'll see you guys next time for when uh, the next thing comes out. Be sure to watch whatever you feel like watching, whatever's on my channel. Check out my friends as well, of course. Nordipur, Coda, Kingslayer Koshi, Dr. Love, the rest of the Lazy Dreamers. I have a decent bit of friends. I just never bring them on here because, well... I'm a bit of a loner when it comes to solo recording. But, who knows? I might have a guest on at some point. I just don't know when. It's been a long time, hasn't it? Why haven't I ended this yet? Okay, everybody. Take care. Love you guys.